Okay, so second lecture in or second video in core lecture three. We've done the, just the intro video and now we're going to look at the mechanisms again. So, mechanism one use less of the resource in production of one or more product categories. That's less resource per unit produced. So what we want to do is, and what we're particularly interested in is technological change which makes that easier. So if we have R, and remember before we talked about an input augmenting, I don't know if I used that term before, but input augmenting knowledge, AR, then the effective inputs of R are just AR, R. But if we include that in the Cod Douglas, if we imagine like AR, R to the beta here, then we, we can just take out this factor AR to the beta. Nothing really changes. It's just an overall increase in productivity. It doesn't make the resource per se less necessary. And it turns out, actually, if the resource price stays the same, we end up, the market um, firms will end up using more of the resource because they got more productive in using all the inputs. So more of the resource gets sucked in at a given price. So we need to adapt this function to allow for directed technological change making resource efficiency greater. This function as it is, it does say that, look, if we, if the price of R goes up, we'll use less R. And in fact, as you know, the factor share of R, WRR over Y is constant. So if WR goes up, holding Y constant, R will go down. So there is some flexibility in this model. But even there, we're interested, that's just like, we're just sort of assuming that by writing down this production function. We want to investigate, does that really make sense? Okay. So we've got to look much more closely at this first mechanism. The second mechanism, we want to be shifting between resources. So then we want, instead of R, we want like R1 and R2. And we could do something very simple and just say, like this, yeah. That would be just, yeah, we've just got these two resources. We can choose whichever we want. But that would be, again, that would be like a massive assumption, right? What if we've got like oil and solar? We can't just sort of switch between them just like that. Maybe one's more expensive, but there's these different properties. And maybe we can invest in the efficiency of solar, maybe R2 is solar, A1, R1, this is oil, A1 is already very high, we know what we're doing with oil, maybe A2 is low, maybe we can invest in A2 and get solar costs down. So we want to be able to um, model that. And here we've just adding them, which is effectively assuming they're perfect substitutes, but can we do that? we'll be looking at that. And the third one, substitute between different product categories. So then we can say, ah, oh, there's actually goods like Y1, Y2, Y3, with slightly different production functions. And then utility is some function of these. And then it's like, okay, what are the production functions for these? Are some of these hardly need any energy or resources and others need lots? And how substitutable are they for each other in that case?
maybe there's some good that hardly needs any energy, like education, and is very substitutable for other goods like transport. <laughs> and then we can just switch from traveling a lot to educating ourselves a lot and everything will be solved, okay? So we can easily do theory and say, oh, if this, then, whatever. We need to do that theory and then start testing it, <laughs> okay? So, what have we got here? Sorry, I've got to read this slide now. Not very well prepared. Solo 1973 argues that high resource prices should drive each mechanism directly. He also argues that if resources pr prices drive up the factor share of the, the resource, that should incentivize research on both efficiency and alternatives. So research to drive up A2, research to drive up a r and so on and one of my papers from 2013 shows that solo was right under reasonable assumptions investment in improved productivity of an input is in proportion to the factor share of that input what are the implications of this okay and that is crucial so these mechanisms boosting AR and boosting A2, given the notation I've got here. Finally, we turn to changing consumption patterns and we link this to the discussion of something called Jevons paradox that you might have heard of and the rebound effect. And we talk about the importance of substitution and income effects in the utility function here. Um, and we also introduce the idea of social norms, allowing one agent's utility to be affected by what they see others doing. And we talk about how that might affect the analysis. Okay, so I think that's it for this one. Another short introductory video, and then we're going to actually get into some math.